All right, and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and also on YouTube for our next deck. We just got a new donation deck to skip the line here, uh, which is going to be this Gruel Midrange deck. So, you know, I've played a lot of different types of Gruel decks, and in fact, we just got done playing a Gruel Frenzy deck. The thing that's a little bit different about this one is we are actually trying out Immolation Shamans. That's like the the big card uh, that's, that's different in this one. Um, so, you know, 2 mana, 1-3, uh, that whenever an opponent activates an ability of an artifact creature or land that isn't a mana ability, it deals 1 damage to them. There's not a whole lot of abilities that that uh, really uh, will trigger off of. You know, as far as lands go, you're looking at, like, Escanta the Sunken Ruin. Um, artifacts, you're looking at, like, Treasure Map. Uh, their creatures... Um, basically adapting um, or like uh, activating the Hellkite or I guess like Bronzedon, like those would be some things in our deck, but you know, opponents could have those. They could have like Resplendent Angel or Shalai, I suppose, things like that. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of a little different. And then of course it has that you can pay five mana to make it a four, six with Menace. So that's pretty cool. Um, we got a bunch of Domrays in here to go with our creatures as well. Um, so yeah, a little, little bit different take on, on Gruul midrange. Uh, we'll see how it works out, uh, for us here. Yeah, like a, Don a Danto Vanguard, um, Dauntless Bodyguard. Those are some things that would ping the opponent. Can't uh, incubation druid without land war elf. Uh, land war elf is is a lot better than incubation druid when you're really green heavy and you're expecting to be able to play it on turn one. It does require a lot of untapped green sources for land for land war elf. So if you're not playing a lot of untapped green sources, um, that can make incubation druid better. And plus, any and incubation druid's a lot better later on. Um, you know, after you get to adapt it, you know, after adapting, then you have a lot more mana, which makes uh, abilities like Emulation Shaman and uh, um, Scargan Hellkite makes it uh, easier to activate those. Pretty odd that our looks like our opponent kept a one lander with Lanwar Elf, but yet they didn't just play the Lanwar Elf on turn one. So do they just keep the one lander without Lanwar Elf, and Lanwar Elf was their first draw? Well, unfortunately, Immolation Shaman is not as good as Merfolk Branchwalker. Branchwalker being a three-two, it's too big for us, so. I just got to sit back and and not do anything here for a little bit. We do get Vivian next turn. Certainly a plus. Wild animals I like. People, not so much. The fourth Immolation Shaman or our third Brontodon? <laughs> we only play four Shamans and three Brontodons, and yet we found all of both of those. Um, Brontodons are just going to be getting outclassed. You know, basically this next turn, they just play Jade Light and then... Brontodons don't do anything anymore, kind of thing. So I guess we'll grab the Shaman, I suppose. Fortunately, this is kind of the problem with playing like some of these off the, the beaten path kind of creatures. So when you play against Wild Growth Walker, Branch Walker, and Jade Light Ranger, those cards are just a lot better. 
You can't stop nature. Okay. So... Hmm. Fortunately, the Hellkite's just going to be getting taken down by Cast Down. The biggest thing that I'm trying to do right now is protect Vivian. I think that's the, the most important thing is protecting Vivian. Oh, really, Fire? Oh, I'm sorry. Familiar, ruthless knave, and vindictive vampire. Right, I'll try to write those down. Um. Balance comes. All right, do we get to Vivian Ultimate? They don't have two black for a contempt yet. So Ruthless Knave. Biomancer is familiar. Uh, Slimefoot. And Vindictive Vampire. Alright, so I have five blockers. They have six attackers. Don't get to ultimate with Vivian, unfortunately. Uh, but we'll keep Vivian at five. We'll lose one Immolation Shaman and kill four of their creatures, including all of those. Um, Meet land where else. And that, that should be kind of good enough for us to, to take over here now. Oh, it's getting really punished for keeping that one lander. Not not vampire. Okay. Slimefoot. So it's Slimefoot, Familiar, and, and Knave. Like this wild breath walker still may kill me. Ah! Strike me, and you strike nature. I've seen things that would break someone like you. I'll leave the Rekindling Phoenix back to be able to block Wild Breath Walker.
All right, so this is our Star of Extinction matchup. Uh, Daredevil's pretty good here as well. Um, I'm going to trim a couple of Malaysian Shamans. <laughs> they are just get outclassed way too easily. Um, as you saw there, they just weren't doing anything. Uh, thankfully, Vivian's just awesome. That's a good point. That's a good point. I should just attack with the. I could have attacked with the shamans before playing other stuff, and they won't block, because if they do block, then I spend my mana on pumping it. Harpooner for thief of sanity. That's even if they have thief of sanity. I don't think it's too likely that they have thief of sanity. Um. I'm kind gonna of play carnage tyrants. Let's do that. Koala Bear. Thanks for a resub in there for the second month. I really do appreciate that. That is sub number eight on the day. I'll take this one. We can run with this. Love watching weird decks. Keep it up. Uh, thanks, Wild Bear. Hmm. Nothing to do yet. Alright, found something to do. Don't get to... You know, we're kind of like a, a turn late on all of our things. Like, I wouldn't mind them doing that on turn two and then us um, have the Spellbreaker turn three, Phoenix turn four, you know, and so on. But uh, they're basically a turn behind, so we're going to be a turn behind as well. Okay, let's finish up the uh, Gruel Frenzy. Uh, YouTube video. It is now March. I don't think I want to field of ruin any of these lands. That was like the the main thing I was looking at. Um, and I don't need a daredevil contempt the Merfolk branch walker. We can wait on the contempt for something a lot scarier. So that's kind of unfortunate that the jade light now matches up with the the spellbreaker. So. Let's go ahead and shuffle away this. Um, Thief of Sanity blown up one of the green sources. Even though they'll just have another one to go get. Hey, Daryl. No one knows That's a card we're going to need to like Daredevil do. Contempt. So many hostage takers.
So I want to trade these. Um, Scars are lessons written in skin. Well, I can before they hostage take her. It. Every defeat is a new beginning. But of course, now they get to hostage take her, the Daredevil. No, I don't think if Daredevil had Flash, it'd be played more than Snapcaster. No, Snapcaster is like. Snapcaster is played in the other formats because you get to really build your deck around Snapcaster and you get to take advantage of it by, you know, playing lots of um, cantrips, removal spells. You know, you, you get to you get to make sure that your deck is um, is going to be good with Snapcaster. You can't really make sure your opponent's deck is good with Dire Fleet Daredevil. Um, uh, so, like, you know, like, it... You know, it deals with your opponent's deck. You know, if you're playing, like, Daredevil and Modern, you may play against an opponent where Daredevil is really good. Um, but, you know, you could also be playing against, like, you know, Tron or Affinity or, like, whatever deck that Daredevil is just not doing anything. Uh, Lav says, um... So, can you re recommend a decent deck for me to grind best of three with? And I... You hate Mono Blue and Soul Tie Midrange. Um... I, I do think Esper Control is a, a good deck to, to grind best of three with also if you like Esper Control. Um, Alright, too many lands this time. Hostage, just... Our opponents playing all sorts of Hostage Shakers is really rough. Um, <laughs> well, I don't think we're playing the best version of Gruul here. We're playing a lot of, like, you know, kind of different card choices. Um, I, I think that, you know, like, we should be playing, like, if you want to be playing the best version of Gruul, I, I think you want to be playing Wild Growth Walkers and uh, Branch Walkers and Jade Lights and all that kind of stuff. Um as well but you know we're playing some some different cards so you know playing a immolation immolation shamans and thrashing bronzodons those cards are going to look weak against uh cards that generate value like the explore creatures do um So yeah, Esper Midrange. It's another one, okay. So our three mana card is a four four with trample. You know, four four tramples, you know, not a bad card. But I'd rather have the the two one that draws two cards, um, than the four four with trample. You know, just drawing two extra cards is just quite nice. And so you know, that's the the third card they've drawn from Jade Light Rangers. The wilds mm. are my shield. Ooh, that's oh nice. My God. Yes, no very nice indeed. It's gonna be a tough one for us. Um Carnage Tyrant is, is a is a great find. That's like, you know, a real card. You can't stop nature. 
Oh, yeah, I don't know why I... I should have just attacked with the Spellbreaker. I don't need to pr protect Domri. I should have attacked with the Spellbreaker this past turn. And even probably just with the Bronze Dawn also. I should have just attacked both at Vivian. Especially how we know they're hostage taking. I, I don't need to protect Domri. I should have just attacked with both there. Um, Huatli, green, white, Huatli, and Bant tokens would be good to sideboard in when, um, you're playing against a deck with a lot of creatures that doesn't have very much removal. Oh, you're gonna hurt when this is through. And so, you think that the, the battlefield is just gonna kind of stall out and you're gonna have, uh, the ability to have... A good amount of creatures on the oh, on the board. So it's going to be like that, huh? As well. Um. That's when you want to bring in Huatli. Balance comes. Yeah, there's there's four sets per year. So War of the War of the Spark um, is the next set. Uh, there's not really blocks anymore. They got they got rid of blocks. It's just they just did they just did three sets of Ravnica in a row. Um, but there's that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be doing. Um, Lots of Ravnica a row, or like lots of whatever the next set is in a row and, and stuff like that in the future. No, you haven't seen the last of me. Could have maybe been able to kill that Vivian with the Rekindling Phoenix if I would have swung with Spellbreaker and Brontodon at it before. I just can't beat this. I have seven cards in hand. I just can't win. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to find a different matchup. You know, we're just a a much weaker mid range deck. I really hope we don't get paired against Ultai again. Yeah, <laughs> this this deck's not gonna beat Ultai. Um. And that's okay. That's okay. Uh, I just hope we don't face Sultai again. I hope we play against something else. Something we would have a chance of beating. Uh... I mean, it's just team or energy. Uh, it was just last season. That was, was basically the same thing as the Sultai deck now. Sultai is just the new team or energy. Uh, let's go bottom. We're on the play. I want to curve out here. Um, so don't want that fight with fire. Okay, we have a chance. We have, you know, like three harpooners in the sideboard. We have a chance. And this curve, this curve's kind of nice too. Love our opponent not hitting a land drop.
Bridgemire is an annoying card that I can't get through with Spellbreaker, but thankfully we have Rekindling Phoenix, which is a perfect card to play here and block this Storm Tamer. Yeah, that, that's true, Yorkie, and... Um... Again. Nope. Um, I haven't worked hard enough to continually turn to my decks. That's kind of that's kind of the hard hard thing of like how many different decks that I play. It's it's hard to like to continually tune tune my decks, which I need to. Um, last couple days we've we've certainly been struggling. Um, what? You expect me to tuck my tail between my legs? Yeah, I I think like the Slesnia Angels decks, the Slesnia Angels deck we played the uh, recently felt really good. Um, I certainly feel like that deck could be. Um, pretty good in this metagame. So I think we just kind of sit back and let Hellkite do its job. I don't really know what the point of that, that main phase trickster it was. They still don't have any good attacks. And there goes Hellkite, and just finishes up the game. All right, so game two, we get to bring in all these Harpooners, which that's, honestly, that's about all we have to bring in. Um, but that's a, a big upgrade over Immolation Shaman, which isn't going to do anything here. Um, Daredevil. Could get, like, Chart of Course or something like that. Let's play one Rhythm of the Wild to, like, make it so, like, the Hellkites and Phoenixes can't get countered even though that's like a card that could just get countered itself I guess the opponent just conceded all right picked up a win so he played against non Sultai, and we had a chance. And we did have a, a good curve, and our opponent missed their second land drop in that one game. Alright, another good opening hand here. Druid, Spellbreakers, and then Vivian. Please, no Sultai. Okay, not Sultai. Not... So we're playing against, what, Vampires or, what, Warriors? Okay, this is Jund... Jund Warriors? Oh, I said Vampires. Um... Yeah, this deck's a little different. Haven't played against this deck yet. That's a great draw. Your kid only Phoenix should be good. I 
The thing is, what do I want to do next turn? Do I want to play Phoenix? Is Phoenix the card I want to play? Or is it Spellbreaker? I guess it's just Phoenix because it costs four mana, and I'm probably just not blocking with Incubation Druid. So the Selesnya Angels deck, I have four Takatlis in the main deck. Um, in that in that deck. Um, you know, with that being said, it's Sultai's not necessarily favorable, but I think it's favorable enough. I think that that Celestia Angels deck can be really good against all the the aggro decks, including Mono Blue. I think Mono Blue is a, a real good matchup, um, and I think that's that's the the big thing is like Mono Blue is just a, a really favorable matchup. Uh, control's a little tough. Uh, but green helps with that with Vivian um, and Carnage Tyrant. Stuff like that, and then yeah, Sultai, you have the the four honor guards in the main deck. I honestly don't think I honestly don't know anything that I I prefer is favorable against Sultai. Honestly. Um. Hmm. I kind of want to just activate Incubation Druid this turn. I should probably kill this Growth Chamber Guardian, though. Before they just get to activate it and go find more Growth Chamber Guardians. We're just in, like, that, that awkward spot, mana-wise. Of only playing one thing. That's seven damage, which will put me down to six. So I can either go to six or block with Druid and stay at nine. So I'm just going to six. Well, Immolation Chauvin's pretty good here. Good at blocking gutter bones and remodi reveler, especially gutter bones. I'm just going to activate Incubation Druid and start getting some more mana there and have like a th another 3-5 to block with. All that kind of stuff. Alright, Domri plus Phoenix. Let's kick this madness into high gear! <laughs> this ain't going to be one of those quiet riots! Hey, Sothian. And yeah, I am being safe. I'm not attacking like a Phoenix, because I don't want them to just have, like, you know, removal spell on end step, on tap, another removal spell, I'm dead kind of thing. Um, you know, I think we can be pretty safe here. So, let's get... Let's get Vivian now. <laughs> Domri does sound pretty silly. How this thing goes is up to you. No one knows the wilds like I do. Uh, 
Uh, if that rekindling phoenix dies, it will not have the one one counter whenever really it comes back. Before you get your teeth kicked in. All right, just just blocking with a bunch of stuff. Um, I don't know if they're gonna have like, you know, colossal, or like something that like increases the the power here. I think that's why you make that attack. Oh, give a death touch. All right. It's out of here. I've seen things that would break someone like you. Hmm. So if I use Domri, let's see, so that's three, four, five. I can go Domri plus Brontodon. Or like the 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 Hellkite plus Brontodon. A little power can go a long way. I don't think I really need to do... Oh, I guess I just had lethal. I am so careful. I guess I just had lethal. Do I still have lethal? 4, 8, 13. Oh no, I don't have lethal. They have Harpooner. Never mind, not lethal. Harpooner's around. We got to ride a harpooner late game. No, I no. We only have the harpooners in the sideboard. Haven't drawn a, a harpooner yet. Um, three, four. So I can activate Hellkite twice. Deserves its demise. Yeah, might as well ultimate the Domri and just see if Domri says anything cool. Domri ult. Yeah, it was a little bit of a letdown. But we got the Domri ult. Alright, does the opponent have removal? They have a statue. Do have a statue. So that means we have not won this game yet. Meet my newest and friend. We should be getting yeah, end step. We'll get the four for end step, so we don't have to worry about like one haste creature coming in and killing us. So that was kind of cool, though, that 4-4 that, uh, four, four coming in there.
So perfect matchup for Ripjaw Raptor. Um, I'm not sure what else we want to be doing. Do I want to be daredeviling? I'm not sure if I need any of these other cards. Um, Ripjaw coming in. I think I maybe trim some Domries for Ripjaw. I uh, use the control button to on your keyboard to hold control uh, in Arena. Star, I have that. That will come in against Sultai. Um, I, I think Star is going to be a little too slow here, though. Yeah, we we certainly have to be worried about the Chain Whirler combo. Uh, Chain Whirler with status statue. Um, can't really do too much about that combo, unfortunately. You know, like, we don't have, like, you know, discard or, or anything. We, we are just kind of a creature deck. We don't have, like, a lot of removal to keep their battlefield clear. We are just a creature deck. Um, so, yeah, maybe our opponent was sitting there holding the Chain Whirler that whole time and uh, would have blown us out with it. If they had, like, maybe they didn't have triple red? I, I don't really remember. Or maybe they were just sitting there waiting to draw a Chain Whirler. I didn't have one. Oh, I forgot to have this deck labeled as a donation deck. Just forgot to put that over there. The Pelt Collector. Turn three, Phoenix. That's our plan. <laughs> yeah, they're coming for my pelt. Oh, guys, just laying on the pelts over there. He's doing, he's doing just fine. Play this thing. Yeah. Uh, what are some other options for non-black deck against planeswalkers? Uh, white. White decks have enchantment removal, such as like Ixalan's Binding or Conclave Tribunal. Uh, blue decks have not very much. Blue decks have to kind of counter the the planeswalkers if they're on the battlefield. You're really looking at. Um, Mass manipulation uh, to be able to take it, or a bounce spell to put it back in their hand to be able to recounter it, such as um, River's Rebuke or whatever the new Inch of the Royal is named. Um, but yeah, bounce spells. Um, red decks just have burn spells to fire at it, at Planeswalkers. Um, green decks just have creatures to go. Um, to attack them. So green decks just kind of have to attack with creatures. I certainly see my opponent having another Chain Whirler in hand. Yeah, and then, yep, and then any, that's a good point, any any color can just play um, the Immortal Sun. Yeah, no problem. So I'm double blocking to make sure to kill Chain Whirler, so if they have a Lightning Strike. They don't get to save Chain Whirler. If they have like the, the Death Touch thing, um, you know, like they, they would be able to like play the other Chain Whirler and Death Touch it anyway. Uh 
All right, well, can't do anything about that, but hope they don't have a chain, another Chain Whirler kill this Phoenix. Status Statue has been just incredible in their deck, though. Like, the plus one, plus one in Death Touch has been incredible. They had another Chain Whirler. That statue has just been incredible. Guess I need to be playing around it a little better. Let's get this daredevil in here. Maybe I can starve extinction on the play. Maybe I can get to seven and starve extinction. So that star could have been an it immolating shaman, immolation shaman, immolating shaman, immolation shaman. Uh, yeah. So if we would, yeah. So I could have activated the shaman to be a four six, but the four six just dies. Um, the four six dies to. The Chain Ruler had First Strike and Death Touch. Um, so First Strike and Death Touch just kills your creatures immediately. So the 4-6 that didn't matter. But that was, of course, my plan was to make it a 4-6 whenever I was blocking with it. Uh, spice, yeah, there you go. That's that's what Immolation Shaman's for, is for some Spice. All right, let's try to get to this Vivian. Yeah, the spice must flow from Dune. I've never, I've never read any Dune books or seen any Dune movies. I think were there like some movies or TV shows or something like that with Dune as well. Um, but I, I did kind of learn a little bit about some, like I learned about like the the spice references from Dune. Um, a friend taught me because uh, I uh, made a deck called Four Color Spice Harvest before. Um, uh, so we learned a little bit about that kind of stuff. We did that for like an old Super League. Okay, so that's how it goes. Dune, Dune movie equals boring. Dune book equals Come awesome. I always kind of thought that the, from that's why I always kind of heard about the movie was that it was boring. And it had a low budget TV show also. But the books are great. Okay. Oh, there are games? There were Dune games? Alright, well, they got their combo. I'm not losing everything again. And that's going to kill Vivian. Oh, that's rough. Ooh. <laughs> I've seen worse. Come on, lands. Come on, lands. Yeah, 
Hey, Zaxian. Doing good. We really need lands, though. this you know keeps them from attacking same thing with my hope from the last the previous turn but you know if we would have drawn a land in the last two turns we would have been able to play our creature plus coil that would have been a lot better get the land now? Nope. Ugh, what a rough game. That, you know, we were looking really great whenever we played the Vivian, but just everything went wrong. I guess I needed to take a land from the Vivian instead of the Rekindling Phoenix. Yeah, Chain Whirler just wrecked us. Alright, so we went 1-2. Uh, lost to some other mid-range decks. Beat Mono... Mono blue. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I just don't think we're, you know, as powerful as other mid-range decks here with this deck. Immolation Shaman, I know you want to try it out for some spice there, J-Jack, but I think that the report is that Immolation Shaman is just not good enough for standard. Unfor unfortunately, it was just always a lot weaker than what our opponents were doing in the mid-game, like the other creatures on the battlefield. Um, five is just so much mana uh, to activate, and even at like times like where we had a bunch of them on the battlefield and we could activate, we were just wanting to do other stuff with our mana, like Hellkites, or just casting more cards off Vivians and stuff like that. Um, so, fortunately, not, not too too good of a card um but that's okay you know it's good to try new cards and and see um all right so if you're watching this later on on youtube of course don't forget to hit that subscribe button and thanks for watching i'll see you for the next video